Now will you notice verse 7. It says, Behold, he cometh with clouds, and every eye shall see him, and they also which pierced him. Now, what does it mean by those that pierced him? They're dead. But it means the nation, Israel, and then, and all kindreds of the earth. And that means all the Gentiles. And are they going to be delighted? No. They shall wail because of him. Even so, amen. Amen again. That's his name. He's going to put the finishing touches on everything. Now, behold, he cometh with clouds. That denotes the personal and physical coming of Christ. And when it says, every eye shall see him, it will be a physical and bodily appearance and appeal to the eye gate. Now, as far as we know, when he takes the church out of the world, he doesn't appear to everyone. I don't believe in a secret rapture, as some have attempted to describe it and then attempt to discount it. My feeling is that the rapture, he doesn't come to the earth. He take, We're to be caught up to meet the Lord in the air. If he's coming to the earth, there's no point of being caught up in the air. Now, every eye shall see him. Now, the emphasis in the book of Revelation is going to be upon his coming to this earth to establish his kingdom. And that's the reference that is here. And we're told that all the tribes of the earth shall beat their breasts because of him. Now, this is going to be the reaction of all Christ's rejectors. You see, the world won't want to see him. The word amen actually means faithful. He's going to do it, friends. This is something he's not going to change his mind about. He's faithful. Now he says here in verse 8, I am Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the ending, saith the Lord, which is, which was, which is to come, the Almighty. Now he's Alpha and Omega. And this is quite remarkable in the Greek language here. The Greek text, the Alpha and Omega are the first and last letters of the Greek alphabet. And from the alphabet, you make words, and he's called the Word of God. And he's the full revelation and the intelligent communication of God. He's the only alphabet that you can use to reach God, my friend. The only language God talks and understands is the language where Jesus is the Alpha and Omega and all the letters between. He is the A and the Z, and he's the A, B, C. So if you're going to get through to him, you will have to come through Jesus Christ. And the emphasis is here, actually, upon the beginning and the end. The omega is not spelled out as is the alpha. Now, the alpha is spelled out. Why? He's the beginning. That's already filled up. The omega, the ending's not been filled up yet. So he didn't spell that out. And to me, that's quite remarkable. The ending is not yet complete. He's going to complete God's program. Now, the beginning and the ending refers to the eternity of the Son and his immutability. Jesus Christ, the same yesterday, today, and forever. Now, that doesn't mean when you say he's the same, that he's walking over yonder by the Sea of Galilee today. He's not. And it doesn't mean he's out there in a boat with his apostles. He's not. But it means in his attributes, he is the same. He is not changed. He is immutable. Now, we are told here that since he's the beginning and the ending, he encompasses all time and eternity. And it says, saith the Lord, the God, is an affirmation of the deity of the Lord Jesus Christ, which is... That is, at the present time, the glorified Christ, which was past time, the first coming of Christ as Savior, and which is to come the future time, the second coming of Christ as the sovereign to this earth. Now, that takes in here this very remarkable section, greetings from John the writer and also from the Lord Jesus Christ. And he says he loves us. Now, let's not be afraid of anything.